right, Shalom one. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rukha Kutash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and the whole world. Blessings to the hopeful elect out there teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. And the hopes we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, I ain't gonna make this a very, very long video. I just wanted to, you know, just touch on a few things, a few points. You know, and as I was sitting here driving on my way back into London, I was just thinking about, I was just thinking about like, you know, my life, you know? Or, you know, as we tend to do sometimes, you know, it feels like in the truth, like, you know, your brain is just being squeezed and, you know, but that's okay, you know, it just means that the Lord is chastening us, you know. Um, the scripture says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent, you know, the Lord is is definitely putting us through it in these last days, you know, this some crazy ass shit that's going on out here in this world right now. Specifically because we are in the last days, you know? When we are looking at the earthquakes, the wars, the rumors of wars, you know, what's happening over there in the land of Israel right now with this whole situation with Hamas. And in response to that, now you've got uproars of the people, you've got people that's supporting Palestine, you've got people that's supporting Israel. And, you know, it's just, um, it's all about biblical prophecy, man, at the end of the day, you know? But in the midst of all of that, you know, we still got to keep our heads screwed on tight, you know, and just remember that this is all a part of the Lord's plan. Okay? Because, yeah, it is biblical prophecy, and that's all a part, that's all a part of the plan, you know? The Lord's having these things happen, uh, the Lord's having these things shape, shake up on the earth, because it's all a part of the plan. You know? And it's no wonder as to why, you know, we're feeling it more in these last days because as we see the day of the Lord coming closer and closer, which the scripture describe it in Romans 13 and 11, um, that now it's high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. As we see the day of our salvation, you know, approaching, you know, all the more so nearer, we're going to see more and more wicked shit on the earth play out. We're going to see more and more, and we're going to feel uh, more heavy in the spirit as well. All right? Because, um, you know, Esau, you know, he ain't taking no breaks when it comes to establishing his NW wall. You know, and he's going to have to do that. Um, because it's all a part of biblical prophecy. Again, remember... They have a NWO agenda, man. They wanna, they wanna chip people. They wanna put a lot of people to death on the on the face of the earth. Okay. They had the uh, Georgia Guidestones, which conveniently just disappeared. All right. And what, what did they say on the Georgia Guidestones that they wanted to maintain human population to around 500 million? So that's that means that a lot of people have got to go. All right. And that's the plans of the wicked elite. All right. Whether they're putting things in the air, which they are, putting things in your food and destroying people, you know, through the things and, you know, getting stuck in the arm. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? That's why the scripture speak about, um, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, man. There is something called the secret counsel of the wicked. You know? You see these wicked elites, man. You know, the scripture says, and I was talking to a brother about this earlier, man, about... And he was telling me that he saw a picture with the Rothschilds and their family and that and how they just had big ass smiles on their faces, man. And I said, yeah, well, you know, like the scripture says in Psalm 73, <laughs> they are not in trouble as other men. You know, these wicked elites, they're not in trouble as other men. But when I think about the elites, I think about scriptures like Psalms 149, you know, which speaks about binding their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Because, yeah, they got the power of the earth in their hand right now, right? But the look but the Lord said, when they're about to fill their belly, the most high shall cast the fury of his wrath upon them and shall rain it upon them while he is eating. So 
wrath of the Lord is going to come down heavy upon these wicked elites. And they're going to go from riches to racks. And those frowns, you know, or those smiles that they got on their faces, man, you know, they be smiling now, but then guess what? The Lord is going to put them straight into captivity. So they're going to go from riches to racks. All right? And although, hey, this, 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 the scripture says their mindset is of uh, Psalms 49 and 11, man. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Okay? That's their inward thought. Okay, but the Lord don't give a damn about man's inward thoughts. This is all about the will of the Lord. This is all about biblical prophecy. And what did the prophecy state? Okay, that their kings are going to be bound, their nobles, with fetters of iron, man, to execute upon them the judgment written. Okay, so this judgment that's been written for them is going to play out, man. That's why the, the prophet Habakkuk even said, the vision is yet for an appointed time. Right? Though it tarry. Wait for it Alright In the end it shall speak And not lie Though it tarry Wait for it It will surely come It will not tarry Alright Or even Hebrews uh, The 10th chapter Which goes into uh, The last few verses It says he that, he that shall come Will come And will not tarry man So Yahweh Shai He's coming back to, to save us From these people That are stronger than us Right now Okay Because they have All this technology They got the drones Okay they got the blessing of the sword Okay So they're stronger than us right now But there's going to come a time where Their strength that they've been given Through their technology It's going to mean nothing When Yahweh Shire comes back to defend us man Okay And that's our hope That's that's why we You know that's why we constantly You know harp on about The return of Yahweh Shire man And what he's coming back to do Alright And the, the top enemy of the nation of, The nation of Israel Right, are these Edomites, man? Okay, spoken of in Psalms the 83rd chapter. It goes into who our enemies are. Alright, and Esau Edom is, is mentioned first. Alright, remember this to speak about those that destroy the earth shall be destroyed. Revelation 11 and 18, man. That thou should have destroyed them which destroy the earth. So Esau's been destroying the earth, man, taking peace from the earth. Remember, that's in um, Revelation 6 and 4. Okay. Scripture to speak about the red horse that the power was given unto him that sat there on it. And key word is what given. He's been given the power over the earth, man. Okay, and that's why you're seeing all that wickedness on the earth. Okay. <coughs> hey, the scripture says, Because iniquity shall abound, that the love of many shall wax cold. So things are getting turned up out here. Whether it, you know, be demons jumping on your woman at home, you know, demons jumping on people at work. You can feel the air is just cold. People are getting colder, man. They're becoming more selfish. All right, but again, that wicked ass vibration is on the earth, and that's exactly why. That's precise. That's precisely why things are turning up, man. That's why you feel like you don't even want to be here. You don't even want to be around people because the the spirit of of of, of, of chaos and darkness is in the air. You know. And we just want to take ourselves away from all of this stuff, man. And this is why, for the most part, man, it's like with like, you know, like Robert De Niro said in the movie Taxi Driver. He said, "I'm God's lonely man." But that's okay, man. Hey, the scripture speak about you know the mark that was upon the foreheads of the men that that sigh and cry, right, for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof, man. Okay, so for all. In response to all these abominations that we're witnessing, man, we're coming in that spirit of righteous lot. Because the scriptures speak about for that righteous man, about lot and how he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Right? For that righteous man, in seeing and hearing, you know, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, man. And what, you know, you got these cartwheeling happy people, these skittle. You know, these skittle individuals out here, you know, that want to live these vile, ulterior lifestyles, you know, just off that alone, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah as an example, man, as to those that after should live ungodly. So, just off that alone, acts of sodomy that you got people embracing out here, that alternative lifestyle, just off that alone, you know, that rubs us up the wrong way, man. Because we got to witness these vile affections, we got to witness these people. And you gotta like, you know, you might have children in this, you know, in this in this place to raise, man. Alright, in captivity. You're being oppressed on all sides. 
That's why sometimes it feels like you just, man, this place is fucked. You know? You just don't even want to be here. Like, but it's needful. Like, we got it. Like, well. We're only the Lord is keeping us alive just to push this word, man. Like we got a job to do. We understand that, okay? And hey, the scripture says, you know, about bearing the indignation of the Lord, right? Micah seven and nine. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against Him. So we're going through our, our like our punishment, <laughs> all right, if you will. You know, and no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, man, but grievous. Just like the scriptures say, but you know, but on the flip side, we have, we have to remain spiritual, man. We can't lose our heads. All right, the Lord spoke about putting on the whole armor, man, and that's why we gotta pray. Like the scripture says, pray without ceasing, man. I was reading the book of um, Tobit a, a couple of days ago, and when you go into verse you know, chapter twelve in the book of Tobit, you know, Raphael tells Tobit, man, like every 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 act of arms that he was doing, every time that he was praying, him and his daughter-in-law, you know. He was taking up those prayers before the Holy One. He was taking up the prayers of Tobit before the Heavenly Father, bro. All right? So prayers do get answered, Arkim. And you might not see, you know, we might not see the spiritual realm around us, but we have to have faith, okay? Hey, remember that the scriptures tell us in Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Okay? And that's why the scripture says, be not forgetful, right, to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unawares, man. Alright? So it's needful for us to just sometimes you, you might, oh shit, I don't even want to go to work. But you go to work, you might even bump into an angel. You don't even know. You might even just hear something. The Lord could just strengthen you, right? You know, just show you a mini miracle, man. And just strengthen you. And you might just witness something that you need needed to witness just to boost your faith. Or you might hear something that you needed to hear. Just to boost your faith, you know? And these things that we witness and we, you know, we on our we go about as we go about in our daily routines, man. The Lord, that's why the apostle Paul said that we gotta be circumspect, because there's things that are happening around us, man. If we're walking in the spirit, we gotta be privy to these things, you know, and alert enough in the spirit to pick up when the Lord is trying to teach us something. You know? And that's why it's it's not good to just complain all the time, man. Even though, you know, our souls do groan, you know, our, our, our spirit maketh groanings to the Lord all the time. You know, we're vexed all the time, but we got to have the mindset of, of being spiritual soldiers and just bearing the indignation of the Lord. And it's easier said than done, because I just quoted the scripture, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, right? But grievous. But again, I, I'd like to quote, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore repent. Like... You know, if Yahweh Shai took the mindset of throwing in the towel, where would we be? You know? But guess what? He, you know, he was selfless, man. And he he, sat, he shed his own blood for our sins, man. All right? The scripture says, ye have not resisted unto blood. Yahweh Shai, he's the author and finisher of our faith. So we, we must show him gratitude. You know, the scripture says, kiss the son lest he be angry with thee. So when Yahweh Shai comes back, yeah, <coughs> he sacrificed his life. Right For us He sacrificed He shed his own blood But guess what He You know that was when he was coming as a lamb But now he's coming back as a conquering lion man So that's the balance Alright And when the Lord comes back There ain't gonna be no more suffering So this is And the scriptures calls this a light affliction man So yeah yeah Power is given unto him that sat upon the earth Going back to that Revelation 6 and 4 right You know and it was given unto him, you know, to take peace from the earth. And it was given unto him a great sword. Yeah, we're going through all kinds of hell right now. And it's going to get even worse. But remember, man, it's always darkest before the dawn. And what does the scriptures call Yahweh Shai? Well, we say the, the new Lucifer, right? You know, he's known as what? The day star or the bright and morning star. Okay? The, 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 the light bearer, man. Okay? That's Yahweh Shai. And when he comes back, bro, he's coming back as a conquering lion. And he's going to wipe away all tears from our eyes, man. All right. In fact, let me get that scripture in uh, Revelation. Um, I think it's Revelation 21. Because I'm stuck in a bit of traffic anyway, man. You know, trying to get into this this cesspit of a dirty, dirty ass city that I gotta go back to, man. I can't stand this city, man. You know. But you know, the scripture says, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, man. So we can't fucking wait. Like this whole thing that's happening over there with Hamas and all of that, man. Hey. 
it's coming to the point where you don't even know what to expect now. They could just launch any false flag attack anywhere they want on a, in any major city at any time. Like they show you in the Children of Men, right? In one of the first scenes in the Children of Men, you know, it was in a coffee shop, man. The guy walked out of the coffee shop and then boom, you know, just like a normal day. And then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. And that's exactly how 9-11 happened, man. So they can do this at any time. They're letting you know they can fucking... St they can stage any event anytime they want. All right? And then in response to that, a major crisis, they ain't going to waste that, man. They're going to push forward with more draconian measures, man. And the ultimate draconian measure that they're going to come with, and yes, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to speak about it. Yeah, we're addicted to prophecy. Yeah? Of course we are. The mark of the beast, the, the, the chip, man. And, you know? And through the manipulation of the fear of the masses, Esau can come through because these people are going to be so desperate to want to accept normality. Right, even if it means them holding out their arm and getting pricked, right, and, and receiving that chip, the karagma. And that's what John the Revelator was seeing on the Isle of Patmos. He was seeing people receiving the chip, bro. Alright? So we're coming to that time. And we ain't gonna stop speaking about it, man. And if and if prophecy gets under your skin and it gets on your nerves, man, and you 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 upset that we keep talking about it, man, then this ain't for you, man. Hey, the scripture says, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. Okay? Come on, bro. We're, we're sounding the alarm. We're blowing the trumpet. An alarm is repetitious, man. You set your alarm to go for work, don't you? You you, you want to get paid. You want to make sure you get paid. So you you turn up because you want to keep the lights on. You want to keep the gas flowing through your stove. You got bills to fucking pay. You make sure you set that alarm. All right? And you know that if you're late for work, one too many times, oh, they call you in for a meeting. You stay, sit your ass down. You get disciplinary or whatever. They, you get dismissed after a while. Okay, it's the same thing with this truth. We're sounding the alarm. Okay, but you niggas out there, you you in a slumbered state because the Lord's put you in a slumbered state. You keep hitting the snooze button, man, and that's why you're gonna get caught out there unawares, just like in the time of Noah, man. All right, let me get Revelation twenty-one and four, and Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, man. The Lord is gonna actually. Like allow us to rest Because now is not our rest Micah 2 and 10 This ain't our rest man The Lord said Here we have no continuing city But we seek one to come That's in Hebrews 13 and 14 Alright So this ain't our rest <coughs> Alright Shit our body's all fucking You know I'm, 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 I'm ill right now I'm fucking Coughing out all fucking green mucus and shit This body, Man these bodies are fucking weak And we can't wait to be changed man You fucking so sometimes you feel like you can't even get out of bed Then you got demons messing with your mind You know the scripture says give me any plague But the plague of the heart So the, the Lord's going to quiet that He's going to quiet our minds man We ain't even going to have to be dealing with this shit no more man Alright this weak ass flesh You know vile thoughts running through your mind And getting plagued Because we, hey we wrestle not against flesh and blood But against principalities man You know them demons messing with us bro so the Lord is gonna is gonna quiet that all down, man. He's, he's gonna wipe away all tears from our eyes. It says, "No crying, man." Right? Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So He's gonna take away our pain, man, in whatever form it comes in. You know, you brothers and you few sisters that listen and learn, man. Whatever pain you're going through, the Lord's coming back to wipe that away, take away all our pains, man. And the scriptures call this a light affliction. Remember that. You know So when the Lord comes back Just know that hey, Our fighting and our striving for righteousness Is not in vain Alright It's not in vain man Because when the Lord comes back the, Hey the scriptures don't lie He's going to wipe away all tears There's going to be no more crying man All the sighing and crying that we're doing now We're going to have to do that in the kingdom bro Okay You know what proves that Um, uh, Psalms Is it 116 Let me see if I can get that scripture Okay Is it 116? Just bear with me Because I want to get this man I want to get this Because this goes This goes perfectly 100, Psalms 126 Excuse me man I was way off there This is Psalms 126 Verse 1 when the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. 
Then was our mouth filled with laughter. So now's not the time for mirth, man. And the scripture says, you know, that the sword is being sharpened. Should we then make mirth? No. We're not in the time of mirth. Okay? We're not we're not in that mirth spirit, man. In case you ain't in case you ain't got the fucking memo, man, all hell is about to break loose. Right now, we're in a time of war. Ain't you seen what's going on, man? Okay? What are they pushing in the mainstream media right now? Ooh, nothing but confusion and witchcraft. Okay? This is what's this is what's being pushed out here. The people are running around in a state of confusion. Not, you know, in the unknown. They don't know what's going on. That's why the scripture says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength for salvation. We know what's going on, man. Okay? We're stable in these in these last days. We're circumspect, man, through the spirit. The Lord has given us the eye, the eye, the spiritual eye to see what's going on, man. But the point is, the Lord is gonna wipe away all tears from our eyes, man. There's gonna be no more sorrow, bro. Alright, the scripture said in verse 2 in Psalms 126 that our mouth was going to be filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. So the heathen are going to look at us like, wow, look at these guys, man. And you know what's funny, man? And I'll tell you, this is like a mini testimony, man. And I was telling a brother this, this morning and I was on the job and some geezer came up to me in some coffee shop. You know, and I've noticed, you know, he's a kind of peculiar, he walks around with a, like a walking stick, like a cane and that, you know, some Edomite looking cat, but he always wears like um, a big ass rack sack, like he's going camping and he's got like army gear and boots on and shit, you know, um, but one one time, you know, I, I noticed he was watching me, because I'm always, I'm always in that town, because, I, you know, for my work and that, but I noticed there was one time where we both locked eyes, and he ended up saying, I remind him of a, you know, I remind him of someone like a a famous Jake, you know, called Richard Pryor. You know, he's like a, a comedian, you know. <coughs> so <coughs> today, <coughs> today I saw him and excuse my, you know, my croakiness. You know, like I said, I'm a bit under the weather, you know. And Lord willing, you know, Lord will, you know, heal me, you know. Um, But um, I, I spoke, I spoke to him again today. I said, I thought about what you said. And I looked up that guy Richard Pryor and I said, I can see what you kind of mean. You know, and then he, he kind of gestured around the mouth part. Because I've got like a moustache. And Richard Pryor, he had a thick moustache. You know, and I got hair on my head. Richard Pryor had a bit of hair on his head and a moustache. So I said, oh, I can kind of see where you're coming from. But you know, if he's an Edomite, you know the Edomites, they watch. On a cruise ship. That you know, they kind of they kind of watch Jake, man. They peep, they watch you, man, and they, they size you up. And like they show you that in that movie, Get Out, man, you know. Remember that scene over the over the dinner table when it, you know, the the, the brother of the, the the woman that he was seeing at Jake, you know, he said, "Look, man, if I had your genetics, I'd be a beast." And he was sizing the Jake up. I remember that in the movie Get Out. But these Edomites, they be watching you, man. If this guy is indeed an Edomite, you know, which I'm more leaning towards that he was an Edomite, you know. But he ended up admitting out of his own mouth. He said, "Look," he goes, "Um, I know it." He said, "You know, I know this." He goes, forgive me for saying this, but you know, you, you black people, you, you go, you black people, and this is exactly how he said it. You know, you, you, you know, you're very, um, you're very talented, you're very skilled. You know, you, you, the way you sing, you, you know, the way you sing, you dance, and I'm just letting this guy talk. You know, there was a couple times when I kind of interjected and I said, yeah, you know, you know, I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying, but I just wanted him to talk because I wanted to see, you know, he was like verbally confessing, you know, that we are superior, man. You know, that, and, and I said to him, yeah, well, you know, I said, well, we are a special people. And I kind of smiled at him. And then he didn't deny it, man. And he even said, look, I, you know, because when I used to go to church, I don't go anymore. But he said, when I used to go to church, you know, I, I just always used to notice, you know, they always sung, they always sung out of tune, you know, but, but you black people, oh, you know. And then he goes, but it's different with, you know, the when you got the Arabs, you got the Arabs and, the, you know, the Pakistanis and, Goes, he goes to me. They don't really, they don't really have it like, like, like the black people. It's not the same. And I said, well, you know what? This guy is verbally confessing, man. All right, because them even they ain't got lit, bro. We're the chosen people. You know what I thought about Deuteronomy seven and six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Yahweh thy power. The Lord Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto Himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So these heathens can't deny it. Even though they look down on us, man, we're a chosen people. We're a special people, bro. 
they look down on us, man, but they, they fucking, it's like a love-hate relationship. They hate to love us because we're the best. When it comes to entertainment, who are the best, bo- who, are they, who do they want to tune in and see? When they want to listen to music, when they want to fucking watch a, a good art, a good dust-up, a good fight, all right? When they want, you know, they, it's always Jake, man. But then they rip us off, you know, they, you know? They accuse us before the Most High. They take our inventions, man. They make no account of our labors. That's in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. You know, when it comes to inventions, it's like, that's our people. Jacob is the former of all things. Why? Because we're a special people, bro. And that's why I told this cat. And that's why, <coughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, I just told him that we're a special people. <coughs> Reason being, why I'm going into that mini testimony there is, um, because the scripture just said in verse 2 in Psalms 126 It just said they said Then they said they among the heathen The Lord has done great things for them And guess what They're saying that right now on a smaller scale Alright but they damn sure are going to be saying that You know in the kingdom When they see us fucking flying around with spiritual powers And we're shining man And that's why Arkham Look man don't lose hope Because the time of our sufferings coming to a fucking end You know We're going to be like them that dream man you know, hey, the Lord said pleasures forevermore is what waits for us, man. You know, out of the Lord, Lord's right hand are pleasures evermore. So don't lose hope, man. We got, hey, that the scripture says, fight the good fight of faith, man. You know, immortality is what awaits for us. So don't worry about it, man. Hey, and even just doing this lesson is, is picking me up in the spirit anyway, man. And I pray this is edifying to all you that are listening and learning out there too, man, because. Our suffering And the Lord's coming back To wipe away All our tears man Don't even watch Don't even watch it bro Okay Hey the curses Are going to be on these heathen And they're slowly Being transferred Onto the heathen Right now man So Hey their king, Esau's kingdom Is going down This kingdom is divided Just look at the news man This kingdom is divided And it's not going to stand This ain't going to be forever This is a light Affliction The scripture says That the fashion of this world Passes away man Alright so soon come, man. You are can just sit tight. And I'm saying this for myself too, man. Alright? Because we almost out of this bitch. We almost out of here. Alright? So with that, man, hey, just a few words, man. And, and Lord willing, it was exhortational. Remember, Acts 14 and 22, man. Could, you know, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom, bro. Alright, so we got to exhort one another, man and, and Lord willing, this video was exhortational Alright As we keep on moving Closer and closer to the return of our Lord So what's he going to do? He's going to fucking conquer this place, man He's going to set up his kingdom on the earth 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, man He's going to put down all rule and all authority He so thinks he's got power now Wait till when Yahweh Shai comes back, bro and he's coming back to gather his elect too, man. And simultaneously destroy your fucking wicked ass, dark ass kingdom, man. Alright? And for everyone that wants this wicked ass orgy party to continue, man, you're on the wrong side. Because you're Howard Shire, he don't want this place to continue. Hey, the scripture says the day of the Lord burns in his heart. And we know what he's coming back to do. And then when, and in the, in the process of that, he's going to wipe away tears from our eyes. Alright? And that's what we're waiting for. Uh, our salvation is nearer than when we believe, man. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh, man. The scriptures ain't there, you know, for no reason, man. It's to comfort us, man. All right. So with that, man, I pray you were uplifted and edified. Kahalaliam la Yahweh, Bahashemi Hawashai, which be the name of the heavenly Father, right, and the name of His Son. Okay, which Yahweh meaning He is. Yahweh Shai meaning what? He. Deliverer man And who's he coming back to deliver The elect of the nation of Israel The apostle Paul said it What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for But the election have obtained it And the rest were blinded man Double honors to the apostles and the elders Of great millstone that rule well And shalom to the hopeful elect Fighting the good fight of faith Here in these last days It's going to get worse before it gets better This ain't our rest Shalom